Around the turn of the century down in South Texas, there was a farmer selling much of his land. He was having to sell it simply because times were so tough he couldn't feed his family. One day an oil company representative came along and said, Sir, you know, we think there might be oil on your property. Let us drill for it, and if we discover any, we'll pay you royalties on every barrel that we pump out. Well, he had nothing to lose, a great deal to gain, so he said, let's do it. Well, they drilled for the oil, and in those days, the derricks were made out of wood. And when they had a gusher, the gusher literally destroyed the derrick. And the greater the destruction, the greater the excitement, because that meant an abundance of oil underneath. When this oil well came in, it literally obliterated the derrick. And before they could cap it, over a hundred thousand barrels of oil had flowed out. It was the world's introduction to spindle top, the most productive oil well in history. Three oil companies uh, came out of that field. The man became an instant millionaire. Or did he? The reality is he'd been a multi-millionaire ever since he had acquired the property. But until they drilled for their oil, discovered it, brought it to the surface, and took it to the marketplace, it really had no value. I found a lot of people pretty much that way. They've got an awful lot underneath the surface, but until they bring it out and take it to the marketplace, they will never realize even a minute fraction of the benefits that they could bring themselves, their families, their friends, their community, and everyone else. The purpose of Strategies for Success is to share with you how do we discover the oil, how do we bring it to the surface, how do we take it to the marketplace, how can we learn to be so that we can do and do so that we can have. The level of your commitment is the critical issue and it depends also on how badly you want to achieve those. The first two and a half years I was in sales, I struggled desperately, and I do mean desperately. Uh, I remember some very difficult times where they disconnected my telephone, cut off my lights, uh, had to turn a car back in, I couldn't pay for it. But what happened was I went to a meeting at the end of two and a half years, and a man named P.C. Merrill was there. And so he said, you know, I've watched you for two and a half years, and I've never seen such a waste. That'll get your attention. And I said, what do you mean, Mr. Merrill? He said, I believe you could be the national champion. I believe you could go all the way to the top, become an executive in this company if you just believed in yourself and went to work on a regular schedule. Well, I was raised with a lot of love, but nobody had ever said things like, you could be a great one, you could be a national champion. But because of his integrity, and because of his success, he had written the training program and set all of the records. I believed him. I didn't quite make it, but I did finish second out of 7,000 salespeople. The year before, I had not been in the top 5,000. Now, my commitment was I wanted so badly to be successful. The commitment I made was, Mr. Merrill had said, go to work on a regular schedule and believe in yourself at exactly nine o'clock every morning, without fail, rain or shine, cold or hot, I was knocking on somebody's door. Now that year, finishing second and receiving the best promotion the company had to offer, uh, not one time did I ever finish in the top 20. Not one single month, not one single week, top 20, but at the end of the year, I was number two because there were no blanks. I sold every single week. That discipline following the commitment. If standard of living is your number one objective, quality of life almost never improves. But if quality of life is your number one objective, then standard of living invariably improves. Uh, we need to, as businessmen and women, we need to always maintain the home court advantage. Well, in marriage, home court advantage is, you know, what happens at home. What happens at home impacts what happens on the job. What happens on the job impacts what happens at home. That's where that balance comes in. Uh, when I'm at home, I really am at home. But when I'm on the job, uh, I really am on the job. Because of the integrity, I don't have to worry about what I said or did yesterday. I can concentrate what I've got to do and want to do today. How many of you consider yourself to be honest and at least reasonably intelligent? 
May I see your hands, please? How many of you honest, intelligent people, as a general rule, get about twice as much work done on the day before you go on vacation? Can I see your hands, please? All right. Second question. How much more did you know on the day before you went on vacation than you knew the day before? Would you agree that it's minuscule, just a very, very little bit, and yet you doubled your performance? Why is that? Well, if we can figure out why and learn how, and then repeat it every day without working any longer or any harder, does it make more sense that we would be more effective on our job, more beneficial to ourselves, to our family, to the company, and to the community? Does that make sense? Answer is yes, I'll help you with the tough ones, okay? There's no question about it. Uh, how many of you have noticed uh, on the day before vacation that the night before that day, you got your laptop out or just a sheet of paper and said, tomorrow I got to do this and this and this and this. That's what we call short-term goal setting. Now, how many of you also on the day before vacation, when you got to work the next day because you had lined out a plan of action, how many of you, when you got to work, immediately got busy and went to work, okay? okay. How many of you have noticed that as a general rule, people with nothing to do want to do it with you? Uh, can I see your hands? Did you know that according to the research, a little over one hour every day is wasted in idle conversation. On a typical day, how many times do we see people walking around, you know, and somebody says, I, 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 I want to ask you a question. It won't take but a minute. And somebody else says, wait, wait, I, I just have another question. But it'll take about two minutes. A little over an hour a day is wasted in idle gossip every day. That's five hours a week. That's 250 hours a year. That's six weeks of life totally gone to waste. As a matter of fact, I just told you a half truth because when you're talking to those folks, ladies and gentlemen, that means at least two people are involved. It's not lack of time that we suffer from. It's lack of direction and commitment in our lives. A minute can be enormously important. Now, you know, earthquakes and hurricanes get all the publicity. But did you know that termites do more damage than both of them? And they take such little bitty bites. But there's so many of them. And they keep on biting and biting and biting. Little things done on a daily basis as a habit will make all the difference in the world. The reason on that day before vacation you get more done is you've got a game plan and you accepted responsibility to following through on it. That's the reason you perform better. And I want you to think about this. If planning one day of your life can make such a radical difference in that day, what a difference a game plan for life would make. Now what I'm really talking about is attitude. Attitude involves everything that we do. And I'm also, ladies and gentlemen, want to tell you what the healthiest attitude of all is. It's the attitude of gratitude. Psychologically speaking, Dr. Frank Menrith of the world-renowned Menrith Clinic says the more you express gratitude for what you have, the more you will have to express gratitude for.